Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Robin Ritchie, and you are logged into the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie podcast. Tonight, I present to you a live stream exclusive. I am so quietly elated and so excited to introduce to you tonight's guest, whose legacy is one that is synonymous with greatness and is actually global. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you none other than the very beautiful and accomplished Trina Parks. Ms. Okay. Parks, how are you? Um, doing fine. Thank you. I was wondering who you were talking about there. <laughs> All of that. None other than Thank you. you. I'm honored. What Thank wonderful you. introduction. <laughs> Thank you. It's wonderful to have you on the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie platform. Ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful woman who sits before you is someone who has a legacy that embraces cultures. Historically, <laughs> uh, a cinematic jewel. She is actually the first African-American woman from the 007 James Bond series. Now, if that's not serious, I don't know what is, ladies and gentlemen. And wherever you are in the world, I want you to give her a warm round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's I, I was so elated when you agreed to come on the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie platform. How are you? I am I am so blessed. And that's not trivial. I am truly, truly blessed and to be here to speak with you. So honored. Thank you so much for the compliment that you started out with and everything that you've said so far. Just it, it's marvelous. <laughs> <No>. Until <laughs> I, I call it the way that I feel it. I, I, Thank you. Really and truly. Really and truly. Your your background before you stepped onto the film set. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, might I add we're talking about none other than diamonds are forever. Diamonds are forever. Ms. Parks, I want to take it from the beginning, actually. Um, you're a Brooklyn girl. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That foot side Brooklyn. <laughs> Fabulous. Better part of Brooklyn. <laughs> a lot of cultural richness. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about the early days uh, when you first determined that you wanted to be in the entertainment industry? Mm. This is what has always been in me. I never said, well, I want to be this. I want to be that. I was always a performer. First of all, a dancer. That's what I started my career with, is dancing. And my father would take me to uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And I started taking ballet there, and I did for years, up and even up until uh, I was like about ten or so, and I was doing toe work, you know. And uh, I just always liked to dance. Always liked to dance, you know. And that's when I first started at about six. I never stopped until probably when I was May seventy seven zero. Oh. And then I had a dance company, an all-male dance company. But I have been feeling this forever. <laughs> yes. Fabulous. Uh, yes. If this were typed, ladies and gentlemen, you would think that the seven O that she just emphasized was a typo. Let's let's just <laughs> say that. You would think that. So I'm going to expound upon that because, of course, I caught it. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that you catch it. Nothing less than spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. 
And this is how it's supposed to be done, ladies and gentlemen. And we're just beginning. How about that? (laughs) Right. It began with dance. Yeah. How did we how did we transition from dance into Mm -hmm. the performing arts? I went to perform yeah, high school of performing arts. I was uh, in the dance department where we majored in uh, grand, uh, grand <clears throat> technique. And I always liked to sing, too. But my focus was, you know, dance, dance. And, uh, but I had, it was in the Glee Club, Leopard Junior High School. And then it was in Brooklyn. And I started singing then. But then when uh, my father came off the road, he, he was actually the lead tenor sax man for Cap Calloway's band. And, but he um, he moved uh, to Harlem, New York. Uh, I guess I was probably about n- nine or so. He wasn't going <clears throat> on the road too much after that because it was you know the 50s and the bebop era was starting to come in and the big bands weren't going out as much. Not very much. I started taking uh, classes there at the center, dance classes, and then uh, went to it was in the Glee Club at um, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe. It was an all girls school mm-hmm. on 138th. I started singing in mm-hmm. there, and I learned a, a uh, Italian song called Inflammatus. Mm-hmm. And the teacher put me a soloist in that, and uh, there was of course the, the whole the group uh, sang. Um, uh, the background. That's when I really started getting into singing, right? And, um, but I, my focus was more on 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 dancing. When I was in performing arts high school, I started taking actually classes with Miss Dunham and her actually uh, original um, members of original co- uh, company. And I wanted to uh, train my voice, but my my drama teacher was. <clears throat> was a uh, um uh Vinette Vinette Carroll and she was uh directing this play called The Prodigal Son and um she asked me and I was in, I was a junior in PA performing arts if I'd like to come and uh understudy Gloria Van Scott who played Jezebel and also I would sing in the play. Now we weren't supposed to perform outside of school, especially dancing, because if anything happened, you know, we wouldn't be able to, you know, continue uh, in our classes. Right. But uh, I wasn't really dancing too much in this play, but I was also singing. So that actually, and I would say that was 63, 64, when I really started experience theater. And this was the off-Broadway theater production. And um, that was basically my first time doing actual professional theater. I went with the Dunham Company. We performed at the Apollo in 64. Um, uh, on the bill was uh, 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 Moms Mabley, a uh, comedian, and Tita Puente was the band, and then the Dunham Company. And I did one number, big number, uh, because I was still in school. So, and I was always the youngest in the company too, of course. I was 15 when I actually did the performance with the company at the Apollo. And, and then Miss uh, D, Miss, Miss Dunham asked my father if I could come to Europe as a teacher dancer with the company. Because that was the last time the company performed in the United States. And the last time that Miss Dunham actually performed was at the Apollo. After that, they went to Europe, you know, and um, this was the end of her company. You know. um, she started in 35, 1935. Yes. So in 65, I, after graduation, I met the, the company in, in France and stayed with them for a year as a feature dancer. We had to study all about, you know, actors and, and school, uh, dancers yes. and all that. Of course, I knew of Miss Dunham, but I'm, I didn't really know how, what an honor it was to be in her company, to be, you know, taught by her uh, yes. until later, you know. Uh, but it's like she taught me 
so much. And again, my father had to sign for me to go there because I wasn't 18. So she was my mentor in Paris. The creme de la creme for dancers and our dancers. I wanted to uh, be uh, more of a you know, ballet dancer. And that's what I took the audition for, for the mm-hmm. High School of Performing Arts. And I was the only black person, female there, taking the audition. Yes. And um, then the, the Graham uh, teachers came to me afterwards and said, uh, asked me if I'd like to come back for the modern department. Um, I wasn't really that interested in doing it modern. I wanted to gear more in ballet. And of course, I'm, I said, yes, okay, yes. What am I going to say? No, I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right. um, I came, and I, obviously, I, I made the audition. Um, and then I found out that there were no other Black females in the ballet department because they, we weren't yes. accepted in the ballet department at that time. So I'm used to dancing with, you know, different races and all that, uh, and had no idea that was what the rule was. But right. yeah, so I ended up being a uh, you know, modern, a modern dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I, I, I'm curious because there's always been a bit of prejudice within the dance community when it comes to height. So you have this magnificent height and stature. You're maybe five, nine, five, nine and a half, somewhere around there. No. Well, I was five, nine, but now I'm about five, eight. Most dancers are five, five, seven, maybe. Um, Myself and a couple of others. I know when I went for the the Ailey company, uh, Judith, she was like six feet. Judith Jameson, very tall. Yeah. Yes. And again, you know, doing the flips and things. We're not tall dancers. Don't you know? Really get into doing those. <laughs> we can right. do high kicks and turns and things, but flips. Mm-hmm. I have right. done it with another partner, uh, Michael Peters, when I was in Cali Beatty's company. Michael Peters, of course, who would go on to choreograph iconic dances for Michael Jackson, Michael uh, Jackson. a number of his. Yeah videos and yeah. your support system your personal support system as you were outside of your dad what it, your other family members neighbors classmates not so much not so much back then no mm-hmm. um i basically was in my immediate family i was really the only dancer performer with my first cousin my my aunt um my my uncle's you know our daughter uh she was a uh xylophonist cool. yeah so we were practically like the only one that was in showbiz yes yes yeah. you know what's interesting uh my late father was incredibly talented mm-hmm. my father could sing like the the ink spots uh dance he he taught me ballroom dance actually um many many years ago and he could paint and very well too discovered quite by accident that my father played the piano like scott joplin scott joplin i'm not someone you said that that was my father's first band that he played with was scott joplin he was like maybe 18, you know, young, 18, 19. Really? Yeah. He played with Scott. Um, and and then Jimmy Lunsford was the next band. And then he was with Cab for, from the, like the 40s on to the 60s. Yes. Well, that's amazing. And that's really something. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I have four CD sets of uh, Scott mm-hmm. Joplin. Yeah, I have that. That's a treasure. And I think it's one of them that my father, you see, I, I have it where my father's playing on one of his songs. <laughs> oh, magnificent. What was your father's name? Charles, Charles Henry Frazier. Charles F-R-A-Z. Henry Frazier. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. He played the alto. He played the flute, piccolo, clarinet. He played all the wind instruments. And he really? taught me a little bit about the flute. He played classical also. And Excellent. 
he was very supportive. He knew that I loved to dance. He loved like, everything. Take me to the classes, like I said, you know, when he was in town. Because my aunt at that time, she's very religious, extremely religious. And there was nothing, no dance. Oh, no, dancing was the devil. <laughs> but, you know, singing was okay, you know, as long as you sang the gospel to me, spiritually. No other thing. Now I yeah. grew up, <laughs> I grew up watching uh, <clears throat> Frank and Dean and Sammy <laughs> and Lola and Barbara McNair. Um, uh, uh, Barbara, I know Sterling I did a show with Barbara. I, you know, I was uh, danced with Sammy a couple few times, and his show. Fabulous. Hard I saw that. Tell, oh, you tell saw us that a little bit about. Yes, I did. Uh, tell us a little bit about those experiences and these legends at that time who was still with us. Uh, um, Alter, Alter Lee's Boa was uh, a friend of mine and she also lived in Riverton houses in Harlem where we, I lived. She was a little older, but we all, we all knew the same dancers, you know? Yes. Uh, there. So when I came back, um, second time from Europe, um, yeah from uh, when I was with uh, Black Valley Jazz. And um, she wanted to know to, uh, wanted to know if I'd like to join the company, uh, Mr. Mr. D's company, when he uh, did the show, ha Hollywood Palace, I did two shows with Dancing With Him, and also his his show at, um, at uh, the um, Harris Tahoe. Mm. And, uh, his oh my gosh he he works hard i mean his show and we were like constantly dancing and he'd do everything play every every almost every every that instrument in in the band and uh, it was quite an experience but that's how i got with you know performing with with him right yeah. you, you picked up a wonderful work ethic ethic very yeah. young Yes, to I be did. exposed to yes. that and embrace yes. it and to be able to handle it. Yeah. Well, you know, be, uh, Miss Dunham taught me so much. I mean, yes. she really gave me the strength, the inside, outside strength, uh, of, you know, dance of thinking and in the dance world, everything yes. to be able to work with all these other greats, you know, like, like Mr. D and like Joffrey Holden, uh, um, Anna Sokolow, who was uh, Graham's original dancer, and I was in her company. She was a uh, bulk. She was actually the original uh, choreographer, choreographer for Hair. Really? And uh, Broadway production. And she actually, when we were, my ex-husband and I, John Park, was working with her dancing with the company, she wanted to know if he'd like to do Hair. But we said, no, yeah, we were married. We danced in several companies. I couldn't think which one. <laughs> was yeah. this because of the partial nudity or was that, I mean, what, yeah. what, okay. Yeah. That was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like a silhouette thing, but you know, we, I, I wasn't interested. <laughs> right. No, right. Wasn't Did you have any regrets no, since it be went on to? No, no. A Broadway classic. Uh, there's one thing that happened in um, Paris when I was with Dunham, uh, the producer of the uh, owner of the Police Berger wanted me to be in the show. And I would have been the second one after Josephine Baker. Um, because there had, there was none since her, you know, yes. as, as, a, as a featured uh, performer in the Folly. And uh, she, and she, Actually, the, the art, the featured artist, doesn't go topless, but she decided she wanted to go topless. So, so he's saying to my father, and he said, "Well, to Miss Dunham first, that he, I wouldn't go topless anyway. First right. of all, I was too too young to do that." And, right. Yeah. And, but it was it wasn't a regret so much, but I I would have been by myself. Even after being in Paris for about a year almost, um, I still, 
everybody was either going back to the States or moving out of the area, out of France. And I would have been just by myself. Right. Miss D was going back to uh, to St. Louis to open okay. up her school there. That was 56. That safety net would have been removed. Yeah, so it, it was a little trying. For, and I was speaking to the actually one of the stars in the production that we danced in that she said, I'll be here as your friend, she was my friend, but nobody else. And of course, she's a star. She's only doing her own thing. Right. So she said, be careful because sometimes they, those ballerinas can be not so friendly. You know? Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, I'll go on, go on back. And I got back. I started dancing in Donnie, uh, Donnie McHale's company. Yeah. Okay. John and I did. We got married just before we went on the four, like the four month international tour. Right. And that's when I first met uh, James Earl Jones because uh, Donnie also choreographed the production of um, Emperor Jones. And we were, you know, dancers were part of that. And yes. we did one performance in, before we went to Europe. Cause so the uh, play Emperor Jones was performed in countries that spoke English more so. Right. And, uh, and then uh, our, our actual dance concert was always done everywhere. <laughs> All time. Rest in peace to but James Earl Jones, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony winner, the incomparable yeah. James Wonderful. Earl Jones. He, so so great to work with too. Yeah. He was Your history is astounding. You've been on a conveyor belt of greatness <laughs> yeah. throughout your career. I mean, really and truly, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons why I, I felt that it was so apropos to invite you to the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie podcast platform, because in all of that, I think I shared with you that we're also celebrating the 26th season of Imagine That with Robin Ritchie. Yeah. Thank you. Jiggle the <laughs> that is great. That's great. That's so determination. Honest. I know. <laughs> yes. I yes. Know. How were you received in Europe in comparison to American audiences? Oh, so much better. Uh, just the whole company type of thing. Uh, well, first of all, the dance company. When I first went, uh, when I went with Donnie's company, and we went with Donnie's company, it was just all, all countries. And also, we went over uh, eastern, uh, eastern section sector, because the wall was still up, you know. So we were also in D Dresden, in um, Germany, in East Germany, Dresden, and a couple other countries there, performing as guest artists you know, a, a dance company. And the way we received it was just wonderful. Always uh, crowded theater. Theaters were just fabulous. Yes. Uh, I could see the difference of how wonderful we received. And when I uh, went to Europe with Black uh, uh, Ballet Jazz, that was the 80s, 84. Um, it, we only had one uh, one concert in uh, Palm Springs, California, here. But the rest of our uh, performances were all over Europe and Eastern Europe, too. Okay. And then we were asked to come back the next year. Not one other performance in our own country. Mm. Not one. Why do you think that was? It, 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 the company was... It was the theme of it was about our black history from African history up until that time, which was the eighties. And I, it, it, we're just we don't celebrate each other enough. I mean, it, in our country, I guess we have to have big names for them to be in any kind of, you know, uh, big theaters. But there, we in theaters that big names have performed. We were. Um, 
a, a new company, but they, the company was wonderful. One was a featured singer uh, and dancer, but um, they accepted us and wanted us to come back again. But we couldn't get that, that booking here in the States, like in Europe. And from then to now, how have times changed, in your opinion, in the dance world? It has changed somewhat because now, for, for a wonderful reason, our eyes are more open with uh, ethnicities um, to being in productions. Because when I was uh, taking different auditions for um, Broadway, you know, back in uh, 60, late 60s, mid 60s, late 60s, they weren't hiring us. Um, but we used to go to dance the auditions, and the auditions were only at in the theater. They weren't in the studio, dance studio. They were actually in the theater itself, on stage. You know, and uh, we just keep going, but we weren't hired. I mean, to see the change of the people that are ca casting theater now, how you know, open their eyes are. The tunnel is gone. This little tunnel that you only take white. Why blacks can't play, you know, uh, in any particular roles, theater. And, oh. right? You know, uh, on in theater, right? Mm -hmm. So now, and I've been to New York and saw uh, um, King Lear, who a black female was playing the king. It was yes. wonderful. I saw. I said, why not? Right. It worked right. just fine. But you wouldn't see that in the 60s, 70s, or not even 80s. Even the 80s, correct. correct. We kept going. I you know, did a couple of Broadway shows, and you know, that, but I, it didn't make me stop. It didn't make my friend you know, stop. <laughs> he just kept going. Right. right. Anyway, yeah, there is a big, big difference of how Europeans you know, view us and appreciate a sure. lot more than our own country sure does. and that's an unfortunate truth you know yeah. uh, even in, in the 21st century we're still experiencing a lot of these uh sorts of things you know yeah. Yeah. i i know your journey yeah i understand your journey which is another reason why it is such an honor to have you here on this platform to share that and to, to inspire people who are emerging in the arts and entertainment industry. And the fact that you have survived and carved your niche, you know, so <laughs> to speak. It's, it's marvelous. Bring us Thank to you. Diamonds. How did we land on Diamonds? I did a Great White Hope. Um, the Johnny McHale, who choreographed, you know, Emperor Jones and the old, and we were touring with the Black New World Company. He was asked to choreograph the movie Great White Hope, starring James Earl, Earl Jones and Jane Alexander as his wife. So he asked, would I like to come and do, I was in New York, would I like to come and do the, the movie? So, yeah. Oh, the only time I had been to L.A. was when John and I was in uh, Anna Sokolow's company. We went to Berkeley and had a, an, a concert there. But I was Berkeley and then back, <laughs> back to New York, right? Uh, but I knew I love the weather. <laughs> so anyway, um, <clears throat> when Johnny said he was doing that, I said, yeah. Now, they weren't paying the dancers to come from out of state, uh, but they did take care of uh, living arrangements while we were there. Um, so, and then uh, Donnie said, well, you know, paying and going from um, LA, uh, from New York to LA, it, it might have been maybe $150, maybe. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, what, what it wasn't much compared to now, of course. Um, and he said, whatever the, the flight would be, uh, and I only went, um, I wasn't until, 
I didn't know if I wanted to co really come back because I, I knew I liked her. Like she said, what you would, if you, you know, whatever you wanted to get one way or a round trip, what you would make on this film would triple it. So, right. yeah, of course it did too. And after I did, uh, it was like a two week sh shoot for that uh, also. Um, I decided I wanted to stay. And my thought was to get to do my own show. And I asked around and found the female uh, manager. And I put together the, the, the jazz tunes, a couple of classical tunes in there, like Summertime from um, yes. Wall Game Bass. And I put a lot, 35, 45 minute show together. Beautiful. I put the act together. She was the one that got all the different agents to come and see my show. William Morris, C Cunningham, and all, all the big agents in, in LA. Well, they were interested. M William, William Morris was interested. And Fabulous. APA. Yeah, William Morris, and that's the biggest, biggest head how All the big stars are with William Morris. Absolutely. And I knew that APA also had big stars, but not as big as you know um the big names like frank and sammy and, you know, Mr. d and all of us um Liza who Mandela you wound up working with anyway as fate would have it how about that <laughs> it's a big agency but you won't kind of because being new you won't really be you know in the crowd and maybe forgotten it's the greatest advice you could give me and i signed with apa uh, we, um, Marty Klein, my agent at that time, knew everybody. <laughs> and he was, he had, he, he, at and the time I was with the agency, he became the president of APA, too. But he was like almost like more of a manager than an agent. I mean, he really, my first couple of times that I had to audition for something they sent me up for, they he would give me the feedback, which helped me in my career as an act, actor or as a singer you know so helpful uh but mostly everything i got but it's a couple of things i didn't at, he called and asked me if i'd like to go up for this role of uh thumper in uh you know, the james bond movie i didn't know what he, who he was talking about i'd never seen the james bond movie i didn't know about it i didn't know who john uh, who sir uh, Sean Connery was, but I said, yeah. Amazing. Anything he would send me up for would top of the line, you know, thing. So, but yeah, sure. And when he told me about the character, I said, oh, yeah, that sounds like me. And then he called me back and said, do you know karate? Because he didn't know, how to, of course, you know, dance. But I said, yeah, I know karate from Lahagya karate, from the Haitian karate that I was taught by Miss Dunham. And so he said, you have an interview, uh, oral interview with the James Bond uh, people coming in from Europe, uh, from, from uh, England. So I had that like just a couple of days or so. It was my uh, oral interview at the big table with like five or six people there. So they asked me questions. They knew all about my history though, my dance history. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> they knew. But, you know, asked me questions. Can I do this? Can I do that? I love that. And then anyway, and then I came back again. I was asked to come back for a screen test because I was saying a little bit <laughs> something. And then I had to dance audition, which I just choreographed something myself. And I knew yes. the character. And I knew what she was supposed to do. So I did a whole bunch of karate stuff, kicking, turning, whatever. <laughs> and I think that that's a perfect segue, ladies and gentlemen, a clip from Diamonds Are Forever, featuring the incomparable Trina Parks. Good morning, Bambi. And I am Thumper. Is there something we can do for you? I can think of several things offhand, but uh, at the moment I'm looking for Willard White. Oh, Willie. Why, he's uh, right out there. And uh, that's all there is to it. Not quite. First, 
We're gonna have a ball. All yours, Bambi. You're on again, Bambi. Amazing. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> You're an accomplice of his nemesis, and he has no idea that he's about to be served, okay. served <laughs> deliciously, and not in a way that he might be accustomed to. He thought, he thought we would make love. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about that scene, the the preparation. Uh, I I know you mm -hmm. said earlier that you really didn't even know who's Sean Connery, who what what what's the big yeah. deal about James Bond. <laughs> In retrospect, do you realize that you need <laughs> K N E E D, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sure did. James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> In a most uncompromising uh -huh. area. That brought him to his knees. <laughs> that scene is iconic. First of all, uh, bless his soul, Shoshan was just amazing to work with. So wonderful to work with. And uh, he, uh, we were staying at the same hotel in Palm Springs, California, because that's where we shot uh, the scene, at the Elrod House in Palm Springs, California. And um, he sent a note to me that he wanted to meet me downstairs because you know when you get on in on the on the set and all you don't have time to really really get to know each other and all this he's yes. in your character he's in this character and all um and so he said uh before you go because he wasn't there on the first and second first or second day um so i had to be with uh, with uh bob simmons bob simmons yeah the the stunt, uh, stunt man and you know just map out everything from very yes. beginning to end, each each section of the scene. And he it was so nice that uh uh Sir Sean was, you know, wanted to meet me and just say hello and just get, you know, before we went on to the set. And that was a to build camaraderie. Yes. And yes. we actually right. have a few images and we can see yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, and those are behind the scenes. Yeah. Now shot. the one on the on, on the right was behind the scene. That's uh, the one on the left where I have my arm around him. That was po probably rehearsal, a rehearsal shot, because he couldn't take pictures while we were filming. No. Yeah. But yeah, and he fun. was great to work with. You know. Yeah, it was fun. Right. <laughs> Right. I, it, amazing. Oh, I was going to say about kicking him. At first, when I re I really didn't do it, you know, really strong enough because I didn't want to hurt him, you know, in, in any way. <laughs> but uh, and then uh, Sir, so uh, Sir Hamilton would said to me, "Well, I don't feel that strength. I know you have more strength than something. Give us when you when you kick when you knee him." And I was saying, I said, "But I don't want to hurt him." And everybody, <laughs> all the guys were laughing. He was saying, he said. So, so Hamilton said, well, no, he has a, one of those football coat cups on. I, and yeah. he said, I think he might have two of them on. <laughs> okay. That makes me feel better. So, I mean, I really still didn't really kick him hard at really, but I gave it a lot more strength. And that's what you see on film. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we shot yes. that one. They they captured it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah. you ladies yeah. no, did a... I Tag team. Mm -hmm. She was, ooh, she was wonderful. Right, yeah. right. All right. <laughs> There's always been a big toss up. Sean Connery, Roger Moore. Did you ever meet Mr. Moore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had an endless event of uh, uh, James Bond. A girl, uh, women could come uh, to this event that they were uh, giving him a tribute. Yeah, and uh, very nice, very friendly. Mm -hmm. Had some pictures on stage with him. 
Somewhere Fabulous. Around. I can't think of it now, but yeah. yeah. So now this gathering that you talk about, and once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the behind the scenes, play by play of legacy. So you wrap this film, right? And it's opening night. And people around the world have flown to see this film and all of the actors in it. How did your yeah. life change after Diamond? And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we're wearing we're wearing rocks tonight. Yeah. We agreed. <laughs> you see, we've got she the rocks. I wear my <laughs> <laughs> and my and this is in honor of Ms. Parks, okay? <laughs> They're oh, rocks, darling. Good. You gave me the idea, Robin. Gave me the idea where to wear the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, being um, a James Bond woman, and they used to call us James Bond girls, or yeah, we say women now, um, was really an honor. Um, and but on the other hand, too, we would get categorized in a certain, you know, kind of a character. Um, none of, only Maud Adams was the only, I think the only one, no, no, a Maud Adams uh, did another Bond movie, but majority of all of us did only one. Yeah, we were only in one uh, movie. Martine Beswick, she's my girl. <laughs> she, I, I think she did two. Um, and everything from then on that I would, because of course I had it on my resume and, you know, of course, Marty would say who I, I was and all that. Uh, people uh, re recognized that. And a lot of times I didn't even have to take an audition because right. this is the person they, they wanted. And when I did um, um, Night Gallery series, I played uh, a schizophrenic in this hospital. Really? Interesting. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, came out the, the part was yeah featured role. Fine, I I, I did that. Um, but everyone that he sent me up for were James Bond fans. Right. Uh, theater, I went to um, to take an audition. There was one. Oh, what was it? Um, it was bittersweet that I did with Shirley Jones. Yeah, it was no coward wrote this years and years ago, <laughs> and it's been always. All, all white characters because his characters were set like in England, eighteen uh, hundreds, you know, nineteen uh, hundreds maybe. And the musical director was okay. a huge James Bond, James Bond fan. And so he was saying, he said, "I don't care if she can sing or not. I want it. I want her to play." Of course, he was saying, but I'm, of course, if I couldn't sing, I wouldn't be in it. But right, still, you're right. you know, and of course, you had that covered, like ladies that. and gentlemen. So, but the odd thing too is, I was the only black besides one uh, uh, black male that played. Uh, it was like an ex. He was, he was an extra, like a servant type of role. But um, I, it, it's things like that when people know, you know, knew my name, you know, knew that I played the character, uh, right. would get me more so into the door. <laughs> and, and others, but uh, I just, I just kept going. I, I, I had no idea I was the first uh, black and you know female character in uh, James Bond movies. Anyway, I didn't see anything until I actually saw the, the, you know, opening night at the at the um, Grom's Chinese uh, Theater, right in Los Angeles. Now, I'd actually like to address the elephant in the room about that film. When I was doing the research for tonight's episode, I was astonished to unearth that Ms. Parks, with this illustrious career, you saw a glimpse of a clip from her performance 
in diamonds are forever. Yet you weren't credited in the final film. How did, how did that how did that happen? Why? How? Why? Why? <laughs> Those. I'm things. asking the Hollywood no world. Yeah, I have happen? no idea why that happened. Shouldn't have. Um, in in other, I think in other films, or they'll show it, and I I think might put a credit put a credit in, but the original isn't. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Either Bambi or I were credited. Right. Now, it seems <laughs> not to have affected your career no. in the least. No. No, I, I love what the God gave me this talent through my mother and father, and I just kept working on it, and I keep working on it as much as I can. Yes. Too, you know, I never, never stop. It's, it's, it's a blessing that uh, I was born with, right. and I'm so glad it was because it's so much, uh, so much to work with, you know, and keep working. With. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's have had that, had that support of my father. Yes, yes. that is another reason why. It's so profound having you here tonight, joining me on the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie podcast. Just a glimpse into your illustrious life, the career that you continue to pursue with grace, ladies and gentlemen, and elegance and sophistication. And I could go on and on, this is quite easy. Because this is, I'm just simply describing who I'm looking at in front of me. Uh, this is who she is. And, you know, in the midst of all of these accomplishments, often the public sees the final outcome, right? They see all of the, but they, they're not really aware of everything that goes into that, the sweat, mm -hmm. the, the hunger, the disappointments, the um, pavement pounding, all of yeah. those different things that bring us to this level and to this point. Yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of the determination, as you know so well that you do, you know, uh, yes. this was what I had done with my life, everything, just get out there and do it and accomplish what you were so blessed to have. And I have fun doing it. <laughs> right. Too. She has fun and, and she looks fabulous too, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, How about that? <laughs> and, uh, to be able to have, you know, been to so many countries, uh, before the wall come, came down and the Eastern and then after the wall came down uh, to meet people from all over the world, you know, that really appreciate you. It's just it's amazing. Absolutely. That I've been able to, to do that, you know, and love what I'm doing and still keep creating, still learning. You know. Sure, sure. And we talked a little bit about that earlier off camera. It's, it's a lifelong process of learning, yeah. growing, expanding our mm -hmm. minds, you know? It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. <laughs> so with this blockbuster film that you were a part of, uh, everything from the soundtrack, and, you know, I'm a big, 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 big yes, no, no. Name Shirley Bassey fan. Yes, okay. yes. I had to bring her image in, oh, ladies yes. and gentlemen, let me tell you, okay? Womp, 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 womp. Okay, like, <laughs> I was one of those corny little kids who loved to sing Broadway themes yes. and, and you know, that sort of thing, and which wasn't always that uh, popular. <laughs> Growing mm -hmm. up in Sugar Hill, mm -hmm. you know, moving 
full circle, you have a small, a, a, a palm full of dynamic African-American women who over the decades have acted and performed in the James Bond series. What was this like? And this isn't even all of you. There, there are a few who are missing, but can you talk us through this image that we're looking at? Uh, this was uh, from uh, right to left. Um, Naomi Harris, who played Money, uh, Money Penny, uh, and um, um, Halle Berry. Halle Berry, who was one of you know a, a James Bond girl star, and of course myself, and then Glory Hendry. Um, I was the first black, you know, first uh, black actress in the series. And then Gloria came after me in Live and Let Die. Then it was Halle Berry and then Naomi. And now Lashana Lynch. <laughs> yes. And Grace Jones was actually in the series, in the 007. Oh, yes. yes, she couldn't make it. Queen yes, Spawn series. In, um, a, blue, uh, a view to a kill. Yes. yes. Sure. How did Darktown Strutters come about? Uh, well, through my agent, he uh, told me that uh, they wanted me to, you know, play Serena, I think the name. <laughs> and even after audition. <laughs> right. Right. There are a lot of future stars in mm -hmm. this film. <laughs> and uh, Stan Shaw was one. Yeah. Uh, Roger Mosley. Mosley, yeah, that's my like good buddy. Yeah. Yes, yes, bless his soul. Yes, yes. Oh, my good buddy. My friend for many years. Well, it's um it's about you know a uh, motorcycle female gang that uh, was uh, well, headed by myself, and it was like a spoof, but you're funny, but more funny than serious. The fun thing about that for me, I played different kind of characters, so that was right. fun. Yeah. Right, right. She pulled no punches, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, okay, which seems to be the theme in your roles, right? That's right. I love them roles. <laughs> I love it because neither do I, trust me, okay? Um, <laughs> I absolutely love it. And uh, so they called this genre Black exploitation, right? Genre. Okay, exactly. At, at that time, exactly. At that time, that was the classification for anything that had more than two Black people in it. Yeah, right, right. Right? Now, it's a cult classic. Okay. And that's what they refer to these movies as mm -hmm. cult classics, right? You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it takes people sometimes, a lot of time, when uh, <laughs> for them to catch it and uh, to come on board. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, there were white actor uh, movies like that too. Around that absolutely. Time, you know? and, uh, but they weren't but they, called white they, exploitation. Yeah, they weren't. And, and, no. and we weren't shuffling and jiving and talking and not speaking the King's English, we spoke very well, you know. Right. And it was good, some good roles. And I did right. Mothers, The Mothers, and that a uh, year or so later. Same thing with Jane Kennedy, Roseanne Caton, Jean Bell. We were the four black stars in this movie that we filmed in the Philippines. Yeah. But, oh, I don't know who, I, I had a feeling who came up with that name. And now it was not one of anyone black, I'm pretty sure. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But and, and and it's really about what you accept. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you create your own narrative, which is so important for us to support producers, mm -hmm. directors, dancers, people who are in the industry. 
people mm -hmm. who have uh, people who are content creators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people who can help shape a more positive landscape when it comes to creating our own narratives yeah. and sharing our stories. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yes, I definitely agree. Yeah, absolutely do that. That's one reason I wrote my uh, autobiography is to let people know of these wonderful, great, iconic choreographers that I started out with, and directors too, because a lot, a lot, especially young people, they don't know about this their dance or acting history a lot, you know, and who created different wonderful production absolutely back then <laughs> i mean there are now too but you know it's uh got to be known because i've asked many times because i'm still teaching dance i teach you know the gram or uh, the uh, dunham with an assistant now because a lot of jumps and things i don't do anymore <laughs> right, but, right, uh, right. <laughs> um you know and, and they're not aware of people who came before you and created such wonderful technique like Miss D's or, you know, um, John, uh, um, um, Donnie McHale, and Callie Beattie, uh, 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 Claude Thompson, actually. Claude was the choreographer who actually worked with the Ailey Company way back in the beginning of Ailey days in the late 50s, early 60s. And he choreographed um, part of the movie of, of Dr. Hans Strutter. I knew Claude, but I had not worked with him until I worked with uh, Mr. D because he was, he worked with, you know, he choreographed the uh, dancers in Mr. D's act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Greatness. And then Carlton Johnson, first black male choreographer to choreograph uh, Great White Hope. And not, not black dancers don't know there was a black choreographer. Yes. That did, you know, did that film. Right. So, you know, knowing these people, knowing them as friends, not just working, uh, dancing their choreography. All of that's in my book. Who they are, how, when, and where, and where. Absolutely. And this is a first hand this is first hand knowledge. Mm -hmm. And and it's just magnificent, a wonderful read, I am sure. One hope so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've given it to a uh, literary agent, but I'm looking for someone else because it's been a while. And okay. I think it needs to, you know. It needs to move. I am sure with all of the people that of whom this will be exposed to, um, someone out there who is reputable, someone who recognizes not only the wealth of talent, but the history, the legacy, the rich history and the legacy. We're talking even possibly a film on top of that, you know? Um, a stage play it has so many different possibilities but we need it to be in the hands of someone reputable yes, and cool. someone yeah. of action mm -hmm. so that we can get this project moving yeah. forward full steam into All 2025 right. <laughs> and what's the name of it by the way um they call me thumper ah I thought of um, at first, you know, Harlem to Hollywood, and all. but then um, I remember the film and uh, with Sidney Poitier, they call me Mr. Tiz. Yes, and yes, I, I got that thought. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. I love, but you know, I'm also. Like I'm partial because my Instagram hash, hashtag is they call me Miss Richie, right? Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. Yes. I, um, okay. <laughs> I love that title. They call me Thumper. Call me Thumper. And people that are not don't know, you know, have never seen the movie or know about James Bond. Of course, there'll be you know 
underneath the heading picture, whatever, uh, who I am, you know. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the next time will be a charm because it'll be, it will propel you where you want your vision to land yeah. for this. And it'll be right. And it'll be all of the proper moving parts. So. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie podcast will do whatever we can to help get that word out. Uh, uh, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What would you say to those of whom are watching or listening, our listening audience, what words of wisdom would you impart upon them? Uh, with all discipline, uh, acting, singing, dancing, fine arts, you know, musicians, you know, it's, Believing in yourself that you know you have this certain talent that you love doing and you want to present it, and not keep it to yourself. You want to present it and keep creating on it. And uh, fortunately at this time, uh, as being an, a, a black woman, a black man, your forecasting is a lot more open than it was for me but still we have to keep going and keep fighting for what we know we are which is a very talented uh group and it's something that you don't want to you know just uh let it go away even with some, you're going to have uh disappointments with every uh, you know, in every aspect, you know, this, you, know, you can't do this, you're not cast for this and that. That didn't stop me. And I, and it was not only that, I, you know, we weren't, as Blacks weren't casting things <clears throat> as much, but we had to try so, so much harder, you know. And that's what I did. I just kept on, kept on keeping on, kept on going because I loved what I did and I, and I loved to create what was given to me by God, by through my mother, through my father, and just keep going, you know. And that's what you have to do in this business, you know, because yes. they'll, they'll be probably possibly more no's than yes. But it's, it's a beautiful thing when you can create what you have in your soul. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And they'll go for less than who you are who you are like i was after i did diamonds i was asked to do uh the, you know be uh the in the playboy uh center cover i, I no black, okay interesting yeah no black woman had ever been at all fascinating and, uh, no and i didn't want to promote myself as that you know so i said right. i do something sexy but not now nah. <laughs> I couldn't. That's not so let the me way ask I you. You said no to hair. You said no to Playboy. <laughs> what What are your thoughts about how the industry has changed and the the level of what we see? The What are your thoughts? The direction that we've uh, gone into today. It's you know it's uh, one side is the light. Great, great side. The other side, I feel it's become too, some, somewhat too much, especially for some of our videos that some black women are in. I know I'm from a hundred years ago, but I feel then was the same as now and should be in the forward of how you want to promote yourself as to feature yourself, um, respect yourself in whatever you do. You know, um, if if you want to promote yourself by doing something that you don't feel right doing, but you feel you have to do to get further, I don't agree with that. Um, I never did, and I don't regret anything I didn't do because I would, uh, you know, was asked to do something that I didn't feel 
was um, respectful to my being, to my family, to my father, mother, you know, first to me. There was no computers, no phone, things like that when I was, you know, growing up. And uh, so I had um, to, you had to go to the library and see about things and doing that. Now everything is open. Everything is a click. Um, right. Click away. You, you put click your, your finger on and you can get the answer. And I think that's part of the generation now where if it's not happening fast, if, if you know, if you can't show everything, uh, then you don't make it. I don't agree with that. And then right. that's the kind of the darker side. But the great side is that now we are, people are in casting and production positions that will open their eyes to all ethnicities of casting, you know, as far as the theater and all goes. But I've always been, like my father said to me, always um, be respectable because you never know who's watching. I have seen that so many times. You don't know if you're going, if you're at audition, audition and you see someone sweeping the floor uh, or, you know, around, uh, the room or something while you're in in waiting room. That same person, the mo monitor that's taking, you know, presenting you to the audition people in the audition room. And that monitor will get up and go into the room. She or he is one of the people that are that will be casting you, making that decision. So people want to see, and I've I've seen it so many times. <laughs> People want to see how you are naturally out of the audition room. Right. Yeah. How you are to work with, you know, mm -hmm. just personally, an everyday level. Right. Be that. Be that person. Be that yeah. one that respects you and others. Yes. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to interject. Um your thoughts and views, these thoughts and views are not coming from a woman from a hundred years ago. Okay. <laughs> so let me just interject that. Um, these concepts, ideas, and ideals are coming from a woman who is timeless. See, this is all about... <laughs> aspiring this yeah. this is about aspiring levels and, and and now i'm talking to the women to the ladies to the young girls to the young women who are out there they, there are levels and plateaus within life and we're not going to do everything perfectly because there are no perfect human beings however there are certain things when it comes to who you are and how you are and how you present yourselves how you present yourself. in yes. this world. Yes. And I don't care what kind of diamond encrusted carrot is dangled in front of you. Always grasp for that jewel that fosters who you are as a woman, that when you walk away from whatever it is that you're doing, you can still hold your head high, that you can feel good about what it is that you're doing and that you're contributing to legacy, not only a legacy that you're building for yourself in the present and the future, but the shoulders upon which you stand. Great. That's what I try to do Great with you. <laughs> okay. And everybody else, I mean, really and truly, um, that of whom is presented on the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie platform. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of you, wherever you are across the globe, for joining me both online and also my listening audience. I want to thank you for embarking upon this wonderful road of and journey of 26 seasons of the Imagine That with Robin Ritchie platform. And to have been able to present this beautiful woman 
a legacy maker, a living legend. She is a trailblazer. She is iconic. She's all of those things that we have a tendency of tossing those words around pretty loosely today, but she's <laughs> earned every right to be described as such because that's exactly who she is. So once again, Trina Parks, mm -hmm. first African-American woman of the 007 James Bond film series, dancer, actress, vocalist, humanitarian, and someone I now hold in even higher esteem. Thank you for joining me on this platform. Thank you. What, what a pleasure. And I've had interviews before, but this is on the top of the list. Oh yeah, you are just a wonderful host and I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you. We pulled out the jewels for tonight because it was so apropos for diamonds are forever. I mean, you know, why not? Okay. <laughs> All the best to you and I, I'm going to congratulate you in advance and the bestseller that is waiting to be birthed, to be born in. And Thank you. Uh, I hope you said everything comes true from what you said. <laughs> I'm yes. working towards that. <laughs> But in the meantime, in between time, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so very much for tuning in to Imagine That with Robin Ritchie. I am Robin Ritchie, and as always, wishing you all the best in life for not only you, those of whom you love, and may all that you do be purposeful. Wishing you grace. Have a blessed evening until the next time. Bye-bye now.